Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here, and today I'm going to be unboxing this bioactive display enclosure from isoviva.com. So this enclosure was sent to me by Philip of isoviva.com. As I mentioned, I'll put a link in the description to the website. This is a new type of enclosure that you could probably guess is intended largely for isopods, but has also been used for quite a variety of different creatures. Everything from vinegaroons to juvenile snakes, froglets, all kinds of things, a variety of invertebrates. And uh, so I contacted Philip and said, I would like to check one of these out and eventually review one. So let's check it out. He was kind enough to send this to me so I can try it out and uh, do a review. I like that. Look at that. Nice decal there. And then some instructions. ISO be able to complete isopod display kit. So it comes with the display case, but it also comes with everything that goes in it. There are, there's a drainage layer, that's package one. Package two is a soil layer or substrate layer. And package three, uh, this looks like there are hiding places and things for the isopods to eat in terms of wood and leaves, I imagine. Package four has sphagnum peat moss for a wet area, a moist area. Package five, limestone rock. Package six, cuddle bone. Package seven, leaf litter. And there's also a water misting bottle. So really pretty complete. You could uh, probably just put isopods in here and with nothing more than what comes with the kit and a little water, they could be good to go for a long time. It also has some instructions for care and uh, cleaning and some contact information. So cool. Now let's open this up. It's got some nice padding there. Oh, look at that. Looks like it's very well padded. Oh, I like it. And one thing that uh, you'll notice here is that the uh, ventilation in this case is on one side and then at the top, but that's customizable. You can get uh, just two vents on either side. You can just do two vents on the top. You can do four vents. You've got options. And you can also get the plain display container. If you're gonna put something that requires a different substrate in there, you can just get the display container for quite a bit cheaper than the complete kit and then make the uh, substrate yourself. So, very nice. And then here, it looks like most of the uh, packages are inside the display case itself, but we've also got the main substrate here at the bottom, and that's all that's in the box. So let's assemble this kit, shall we? First, I'll unwrap it here. Uh, one thing that uh, Philip mentioned is that the uh, shipping containers, if you happen to buy one online, you're not necessarily going to get the, the decals on the box um, currently. Those are more retail ready packaging, but uh, that, that is probably going to change in the future. But if you just go ahead and order one today, for example, you might not get exactly the same packaging you're going to see here um, in terms of the, the decorations on the outside of the box. Um, I, it was also wrapped up uh, differently. It was, there was the external uh, paper with the address and everything on it. And I removed that before I unboxed it. Let's take a look here. So look at that, we're all numbered. I love that. So there's two, seven, this is three. Okay, that's a pretty sweet deal. I like it when everything makes sense. There's the, the misting bottle. Oh, there's the cuddle bone, number six. Number four, everything's clearly labeled here. So what I'm going to attempt to do, this must be number one. Feels like number one here. Yeah. There is the drainage layer. Okay, so make sure I'm gonna do this right. 
Okay. Set aside the case with the lid off. I just want to make sure I follow it well. Carefully and slowly pour the gravel into the center. So let's do it. Might as well just follow along with the instructions. Um, just as someone who's never seen this would do. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I don't need to finish unwrapping here. I'm just so excited about this enclosure. I've actually had it for a few days and been waiting to unwrap it. I needed the time to actually do a video. So, oh, and this is this is something uh, I just want to point out here. Let's let's take a look at oh, another look at the ventilation. There's the little decal on the side there. You can see that it's got vent holes up here as well as on this side. Got some vent holes there too in addition to the, the screened vents. All right. So here we go. I'm going to follow all the instructions carefully and slowly pour in the um, gravel. And then it says to gently smooth it. I think, you know, a drainage layer in larger vivaria is something that we kind of take for granted but in isopod containers we don't always use it so i think it's cool that it includes one here to help maintain uh, good aeration and whatnot very good thing okay it says that i should mix approximately one to three cups of water into the soil in a separate and very clean container and so i'm going to get that and it says to use only bottled spring water. So I'll be right back. All right, now I have the substrate emptied in this container, which is a container that I have carefully cleaned without using any soaps or detergents or anything like that. And I've measured out a cup of the spring water. I'm gonna pour that in and mix it up a little bit. As that is what the instructions say to do. That well, feels about right to me. It's nice and moist, but when I squeeze it, I don't feel a lot of water dripping out. So I'm going to carefully set it down in here. It says to spread it evenly over and then to tamp it down gently by hand. So that's what I shall do. I'm pretty excited. See how this does. I've heard great things about it so far. By the way, in the description, I have some links to isopod supplies of various sorts, foods, and different things that you might find useful if you're going to get into isopods. So you can check those out in the description. So I'm going to tamp it down gently by hand, not too firmly. I'm Keep the, the airflow going. And then time for package number three, the decor. This is why I have a knife, right? All this tape. Okay. So it says here, these are cleansed in a way that will keep them pest and fungus free. So that is good. Um, of course, you wanna be careful with that, but it's nice to know that these are already been treated in a safe manner and it says to place these in such a way that there is wood decor on uh, both moisture zones of course the moisture zone this is going to be the damp side because there's less ventilation over here so uh, we want a drier hide and a, a damper hide and we want to of course keep in mind that the isopods are going to be viewed from both the side and the top. And so I think structurally, from, from a decoration standpoint, I'm gonna put this one on the dry side over here, maybe closer to the front. And then I'm gonna put this one on the damp side. Looks like probably some birch wood there. And this is some nice holy wood with some lichen on it. That's nice. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know, I'm gonna play around with that a little bit. 
see where I want to go with the magnolia pods. A lot of isopods really like magnolia pods. Maybe something like that. That actually looks pretty nice from the front, like that. But I'm going to play around with a couple other things. I'm going to try it like this as well. Which one do I like better? Honestly, I think I like that a little better. I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to... Yep, I, I like it best like that. I'm going to do something like that. Okay. So the sphagnum moss, that is package number four. So where did I put package number four? There it is. Package number four is the sphagnum moss. It says, spread it gently in a corner of the wet zone next to a piece of wood from package number three. So single clump, spread gently in a corner. So here's my, here's my moss zone right here. Oh, that's cool. Looks like there's some lichen in with the sphagnum moss for a nice damp spot there. And then, let's see what the next step is. The uh, limestone rock, number five. Here we go. Let's open that up. Oh, there we go. Limestone rock. Near the middle of the display case, but don't overthink it. So I'm going to put it right about there. And that looks like pretty close to the middle. And Cuddlebone. Cuddlebone was in a little deli cup. There it is. Dry side of the enclosure where you plan to feed your isopods. Oh, and there's also some, some eggshells. So I'm going to sprinkle this over here and put it right in there on the dry side and leaf litter comes ready to use spread the leaf litter to cover all of the visible soil except where you plan to feed your isopods so here we go I'm gonna spread those around I see some oak leaves in there one of their favorites. This is a species are species were vary and they'll include too much to use all at once, which makes sense. That's nice and generous. I like that. I'm gonna feed the ice pods right over in here, so I'm going to just kind of shove that down in there. And I'll leave the rest of the leaf litter out for the future. It says to leave the uh, feeding station uh, bare just in case there's any mold that pops up in that area and you can address that. And then, as far as the water misting bottle, it says to spray, spray the decor and leaves. So let's get that done here. So I'm going to get that spraying here and dampen the moss. And leave the dry side alone. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take a second here to add some springtail. The instructions say to do that as soon as possible, and of course I would do that anyway. So I'm going to tap off a few springtails into the enclosure so that we can outcompete mold and fungus nets and things like that. Kind of take care of those issues before they start. And here is the finished product. The only thing it's missing now is isopods. I love that you can look from the top and from all sides, very good clarity. Now I would like to show you what I'm contemplating putting in it, which types of isopods I am considering putting in there. And right before I do that, I just want to take a second to thank our Patreon supporters. I am really excited that Patreon is starting to take off. We're getting more uh, Patreon backers. 
your help is really appreciated and we'll be able to do a lot more on this channel with your assistance. So now, on to the species that I'm contemplating. Well, one species I couldn't go without at least seriously considering would be zebra pill bugs. These are one of my favorites. They're really striking and they also have the benefit of being fairly day active and the ventilation in this enclosure should suit them very well. They do like things a little bit on the drier side compared to some other isopods and I think this enclosure will be a good option for them. So it's hard to go wrong with zebra pill bugs. Another option would be Porcelio lavis orange. This is uh, one of my favorite species of isopod. They have a really nice glossy coloration to them. They do seem to be a little bit shyer than the dairy cows and maybe not get quite as big. I'm not quite sure about that. But if I were to put them in this enclosure, I would be able to keep a closer eye on them and I would be able to determine whether or not they are shyer if it happens to do with population density or whatever. So this is an interesting option to me. If I had to pick a favorite all-around isopod, it might well be the dairy cows. There's quite a few of them in here. I love the fact that they're, they've got to be the most day active isopod I have ever encountered. At least uh, they would be sharing first place uh, for that title at the very least, but they may very well be the most day active isopod. I love their striking pattern and the fact that it's always random and that they, they reach a nice size. So what's not to like about dairy cow isopods? I could also contemplate putting the oranges and the dairy cows together since they are the same species and although they may not interbreed, they should coexist just fine. Last but not least, I recently made a discovery in my powder blue isopod enclosure. And these are uh, some specimens. You can see this specimen particularly that I'm going to try to focus on now has quite some interesting patterning. And most of the individuals that I've collected here, there may be a couple of exceptions, but most of them have this interesting modeled pattern. Now, I know that there is a variety that is proven to breed true called um, Oreo crumbles. And this is probably the same mutation, kind of like a reverse Dalmatian. But these are not isopods that I purchased. These are isopods I collected from my own stock, just in my normal powder blue bin. So I'm pretty excited to try to isolate these. And I think this container would be an excellent, this uh, bioactive enclosure shouldn't uh, say container. It needs a more dignified term. This bioactive enclosure would be an excellent place to try to isolate this strain. I think I have enough specimens in here that I could get them uh, breeding. They are fast breeders after all. So I would like to ask you, what do you think? Which of the four types of isopods that I showed you should I put in this bioactive enclosure? Let me know in the comments. I'd like to thank Philip at isoviva.com once again for sending me this enclosure. I will be doing a review of it after I've had a chance to use it for a few months and evaluate it. I'm excited. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. All right. My daughter and I were talking about it and we've decided what we're going to do. We just can't wait any longer to put something in here and we're going to put these in because I think that would be really a fun way to get this strain isolated. And even though the strain already exists or a strain very like it already exists, it'll be fun to uh, do it in here. They are a pretty day active species and they have really interesting patterns. Breed really fast, so it'll be fun to watch. So here we go. I'm going to release these into their new home.